The migration race is a 650 kilometers four day stage race uh, around the Maasai Mara in Kenya. Stage two was probably, well, it was the hardest stage. Um, it was 160, 175 they extended it, kilometers and 3,100 meters of climbing. Everything was done above 2,000 meters altitude, which I'd never been to before. You code. Uh, we need to get past 10k today before we have any yeah, problems. Man. Five kilometers in and I'm at a puncture. Yeah. yeah. I think that'll be, to, that'll uh, be a good get, start. I think we need to get past the 175. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'll have a beer. Yeah, yeah. We all just sort of rolled out as one big group. Um, it's quite sandy, um, but a relatively smooth road, so everybody just stayed together. There were these wildebeest who ran across in front of the, um, in front of the peloton and yeah, you could see them on the on the horizon with the sun rising. It was all nice for I'd say 30k, but the longer it stayed flat at the start, the harder the second half of the day was going to be because all of those altitude meters would be sort of squished into the second half of the day. Um, so we hit the first climb and uh, the race was on. And that's the front group riding away from us. Hello! Two thousand two hundred. Only it goes up. Some zebras. Fine. We were quite confident in our ability to um, keep the pace up throughout the whole day, but not necessarily go hell for leather trying to stay in that front group. Dad, yep. this, this man is putting you to shame. Ah, I mean, my dad is in his 50s, yeah? and he wouldn't be able to do this. Oh, maybe he should come to Kenya yeah. and stay with me. He, he trained <laughs> him, right? And we can ride together. So yeah, we tapped out a good rhythm up the first climb. Uh, it was about eight kilometers long, uh, up into the clouds, which was amazing. Descending at the top. Time to go downhill. We descended for ages down into the first feed stop of the day. Quick okay, water stop. You having a good time? Cheers guys. That's what happens when you don't concentrate. Water stop too. I've run out of food. I had to ask someone for some food. I'm feeling dizzy. Seven point one k to go. Finished. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, after the and you did the whole route. Yeah. 
Perfect. Perfect. Ja, ik stel een uur daar, man. Ik was helemaal choco. Op de grond gelegen, gewoon. Uh, What's the, yeah, yeah. the riding time? <laughs> nine, nine hours 14. 9 14. Very good. <laughs> that's pretty long, though. Very good, yeah. That's, pretty, that's a long ride. I'll, I'll give you it that one. It was really a gnarly ride, yeah. man. It was my, my, for sure the gnarliest of my life. Yeah. How was, uh, how was your day? But I think I'm number something like 11 or 10. Just a little bit of actually, we the I was the last guy to drop with the big boys. Here. Yeah, yeah. It's good for me. Yeah. I have to say the hardest part of the race, the whole race, would have been the uh, would have been the end of the second stage. Again, dinner was was great and the campsite was really cool. This time we were um, showering in like these tents um, with like a big bucket of water above your head. The, uh, the chefs did an amazing job. Um, I mean, all of, the, all of the food feeding 60 hungry cyclists that had ridden, who had ridden some of their hardest days on the bike. Never see these kinds of uh, uh, you know like strong people like this. So we appreciate. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. The good news is we're going to have a 9 a.m. start. Stage three, like we, we got told, okay, you got a 9 a.m. start, everybody was a bit more relaxed, but somehow, somehow I still was in a rush in the morning getting my stuff together. I think I relaxed a bit too much. Yeah. Kicked off really fast um, and on quite rough roads. We'd all been promised some, some smoother roads, but it started on pretty rough roads and uh, got smoother as the day went on. So I was with a group of three or four of us, me, Tom, Alvaro and um, a few others and uh, yeah and then I just decided I don't know I was going quite a bit quicker on the flats um, so I decided to just push on and see see how far I could get see if I could even catch that front group left that group behind me and spent the rest of the day just by myself pushing on Just under five hours of riding, um, which felt short compared to the day before. Arrived at the finish, I'd come 12th or 13th, I think, on the stage. I think it was 13th. Arrived in camp and uh, that was probably one of my best days, uh, most suited to me and uh, the one that I performed best at. Is that good? Yeah, it was good. I was by myself for most of the day, but trying to chase you guys down. <laughs> and you? Yeah, I finished just behind the, the group. Yeah. 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 And you, how was your day? The bike on, st on stage three was re really, uh, really came into its own. Um, on stage one and two, it had, it had managed incredibly well over a seriously rough, rough course. Um, but yeah, stage three, the ability to turn on and off the future shock and uh, also just the feel of a road bike, some slightly more aerodynamic wheels and aerodynamic bike, uh, get into a good position on it. And when you're traveling closer to 30k an hour rather than 20, um, it make, all of that makes a bigger difference.
Without coverage, uh, I, I tried to find some. I walked up the hill and met a few Maasai people on the, on the hill, chatted to them for a bit, took a few photos, but uh, I, found, I think I found enough. I found enough to send my sister a happy birthday message. Um, Sets up a chair and such like, he puts on his protective kit and such like, and over by that vehicle there, we will start to do the COVID tests. Stage four was at like 163K. Uh, I dropped my, dropped my 360 camera. Um, and had to go looking for it um, and was, I mean, I was already a bit off the back of the front group, but um, that obviously didn't help. Um, I caught a guy called um, Ali, uh, who must have been sub 50 kilos. My uh, 50 kilo friend has dropped me. We're climbing. Climbing, climbing, climbing for a bit. 100k to go. Come on. I am, I'm so tired. 57k to go. Reach. And we are, we are done. Well done, man. Well done, champ. Well done. Wow, it's done. Good work, boys. <laughs> Shit, that was a good ride. Arriving at the camp was, was a very good feeling. Now this is the, the coolest race organizer I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> sort of closing ceremony and award or award ceremony um, before uh, dinner. Actually, it chucked it down that evening. Uh, we, we dodged the bullet there. The whole race was just four of, four of the, or five I guess, including the day before, um, five of the best, best days I've ever had on a bike. And the event, Overall, I, I think has done a great job of, of shining a light on the East African riders, um, and I think it hopes to continue to grow and be able to may turn it into a platform in which they can 
um, race against the best in the world. I mean, all, I know for a fact all of those guys have the talent and the ability to to be at the top of the sport. It uh, just takes the right opportunities. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops and see some of the riders that I was racing against make it in the sport because I'm sure they can. Thank you for watching and uh, uh, if you want to see more about my kit and, and what it is that I brought with me then I made a separate video on that so I'll link that and um, yeah thank you for following along in this video. It, uh, it was an amazing trip and I hope to do some similar ones in the future.